Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you how to open your template and begin to create an outline for your clock using 2D design. So you should have an icon on your desktop, but if not, you can type 2D design down in your start window. You're not actually going to work in that page, this page here, so just click to get rid of the box and then you need to go to file, open, go to student areas, design and technology, then you need to find your year group, year 10, and you need to open clock template. Okay, so you've got that there, um, but the first thing that you need to do before you start doing anything lovely and creative with this is you need to save it as your name. So file, save as, um, just delete where it says clock template and just put in your name and then clock and press save. I'm just going to replace that. That's brilliant. Make sure that you do that. If you don't and you just keep working into the template and then you save it, you could end up overwriting somebody else's work. So what we've got here, we've got a really, really big sheet. This sheet represents an A1 sheet of paper. So that's something like four A4 sheets joined together. So it's massive. So this is the maximum size that I ideally want your clock to be. If it ends up being sort of taller and skinnier, that's fine, or the other way around, um, or shorter and fatter, no problem at all. Um, but those are sort of that's the rough size that I would like it to be. You've also got this bit here, hole for your clock mechanism. That needs to stay here. You'll need it later. It's important. So in terms of like basic shapes and outlines, some of this you will remember from using 2D design before, but I'm going to run for it again. So if you want to do sort of a rectangle or any other um, sort of polygon, I suppose you can hold down the button and you can collect, select like a triangle or a hexagon um, or an oval or something like that. But I'm just going to go for the original, which is the square or rectangle tool. Now I have my uh, template set on gridlock. If you want to take this off you can but I recommend you having it on just for at least the beginning because what it does is it snaps between the dots which is sort of a 10 millimeter gap so it's easier for you to work out how big things are. If you look at, at the bottom sort of left hand side where it says abs and rel you can see the numbers changing. In rel that is the measurements of the box in millimetres. So you can figure it out from there. So that's how you would do your rectangle. Now the problem is the um, laser cutter only understands red and black. So it's red for cut and black for engrave. So if we go to the select tool and select the box that we've just drawn, we can go to line, colour and change it to the custom red. That would then cut out. It's terribly boring, but that is what it would do. So likewise, if you would like to draw a circle, you can go to the circle tool here, draw yourself a very simple circle. And again, change the line color to custom red, and it's there. It's slightly more difficult to sort of prescribe the size of your circle. So if you have exact measurements that you'd like, hold down the button and go to the second one along and then you can type in the radius that you would like. There we go. That's obviously too big, but you can see how the tool works. If at any point you want to measure something on 2D design and you don't want to sit and count out the dots um, in tens, you can use this button here called Dim Lines, which stands for Dimension Lines. And you can click one side, click the other side, drag it up, and then if I zoom in, you can see how long the box is in millimeters. And I could do the same for my circle there as well. So that's how you create very simple shapes using 2D design. You can also use the line tool, but just for anything that you would like cut out drawn in the line tool, you must make sure that the lines connect. Okay, if the lines don't join, the shape will not cut out and it won't work as well. So you can do that 
to if you want to do something a little bit more um, out there. So in the next video I'll show you how to create contours of existing shapes um, if you want to do something which is a little bit more intricate.